Time for another edition of Tim Final Confessions. I'm Tim Durling, and if you're new to the show, I go through my music collection. Started with vinyl, I've got, talked about my cassettes, CDs, eight tracks even, and uh, basically talking about my favorite bands and some stuff that I've collected over the years that I think is kind of cool and unique. If you've been watching the shows all along, you know that's what I do. Today's episode, I'm going to talk about uh, one of my favorite bands, April Wine. I did a vinyl episode on April Wine. Now I'm going to talk about my cassette collection. It's not complete, but I have a lot of the April Wine albums. And uh, between the States and Canada, we've got a lot of different versions of them and a lot of different looks to cassettes. As I've said before, cassettes are a medium where, depending on where you buy them and when you've bought them, they can look so different than the exact same album from another place, another record company. So this is my April Wine cassette collection. Um, this is the first one I've got, Electric Jewels from 73. This is on Aquarius Records, their Canadian label, distributed by Capital. And this is a look that Capital in Canada had for their cassettes in, um, I'm going to say, late 70s. I'm really not sure. Something I'd like to know more about. Anyway, that's what it, this looks like. Uh, this is a very, it's not an original, it's a very old edition of Electric Jewels. And this is what the cassette itself looks like. Next up is the oldest looking, well, I don't want to say tape, but the oldest looking thing in my collection. It's just a J card, because I don't actually have the tape that came in it. But this is from 1974 April Wine Live. This is a very old edition. It's on Aquarius. You see the old Aquarius logo up there. See the way that just the song titles are written. This is an old, old, old J card for a cassette. Sometime in the mid 80s, Capitol Records in Canada reissued a lot of their albums and they used a blue gray style. It looked like this. And this is you, I think that you probably see more April Wine albums that look like this now in pawn shops and the like than anything else. They use this blue-gray thing here. And that was the live album. It's a relatively newer version of it, as can be seen by this cassette. This cassette's in really good shape. They were on various labels in the States. This is a kind of interesting. This is The Whole World's Going Crazy. This is the US version. It's on London Records, which is uh, distributed by Polygram, or at least this version of it was. It's got the PDI version on it. And we'll flash back one more time here. I'll read these to you. Just to go over it. Just, I said the Polygram issue. This, this inside of it tells me that this is a later issue of this. And, uh, yeah, it says, um, manufactured and marketed by London Records, a division of Polygram Classics Incorporated, which anything with London Records I tr triggers one thing. Were the first two Y&T albums issued that looked like this? Does anybody know? Also, let's take a look at the songs on here. If, if you're an April Wine fan and you know this album, The Whole World's Going Crazy. Gimme Love, Child's Garden... Rock and Roll Woman, Wings of Love, Marjorie. Side 2, So Bad, Shot Down, Like a Lover, Like a Song, Kick Willie Road, and The Whole World's Going Crazy. Now right away, there's some different song titles there. Some of those songs are from Forever For Now, but Forever For Now was not released in the States. Not all of April Wine's albums were. And I guess they took what they thought were a couple of decent songs and put them on The Whole World's Going Crazy, uh, left uh, another couple of songs off. It's also interesting, and what further tells me this is a later issue, if you notice there, it says Aquarius Records and then below London Records. It's a very curious release, this one is. This is live at the Elma Combo from 77, and this is the uh, later Capitol Records blue-gray issue. Like I said, like a lot of my cassettes are. Cassettes in good shape. This has the Canadian track listing, which means it does not have um, You Won't Dance With Me on it. It seems to me there was one other song that wasn't originally on it. The first big April Wine album in the States was First Glance. 
This is a Canadian, or no, this is an American issue, obviously. It's on Capitol Records. It's a Capitol reissue, the black and white. Those are the reissues, or some one of the, the things that they used for reissues. It says right here, a Capitol reissue. Nothing inside of the J card. This is what the cassette itself looks like. I think before the blue-gray was used for Capitol Records cassettes, they used this yellow and black. This is April Wine's Greatest Hits. This is actually the only version of the, the Greatest Hits that I've seen that has this kind of look to it. And this is what the cassette looks like. Greatest Hits obviously wasn't released in the States because they didn't only had one or two hits to that point. One of the most successful April Wine albums. This is Harder Faster. This is a U.S. Capitol Records reissue. And uh, this is what the cassette looks like. Most successful April Wine album, Nature of the Beast. This is the U.S. Capitol version. This is, I believe, the original issue from 1981. And this is what the cassette looks like. I also have a later issue of Nature of the Beast, also U.S. That's another common capital usage. Um, yellow on the side, not just white. And as you'll see, the tape is a clear colored tape. So this, I am going to go out on a limb and say, is a very recent issue of Nature of the Beast. One of the other reasons I say that, not just the clear cassette, but if you look at that serial number, that's the CD serial number. So that's just a music geek thing that I, only I would notice. That just tells me that you know this album was successful enough to be issued more times than any of the rest. Another Canadian only issue uh, that came out, did not come out in the States, is this Best of April Wine Rock Ballads. This came out in 1981 in Canada. I don't think it came out anywhere else. So this is obviously an original issue. It's pretty worn. Um, I doubt this cassette plays. And the cassette itself is quite faded. Next April Wine album I've got two versions of is Power Play. This is the original U.S. Capitol issue of Power Play. It's actually, this one actually folds out. And it has the famous XDR logo on it. Which basically meant that if you saw an XDR logo when you put the tape in, it would boop, 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 boop. It would have like a series of tones. Beat up tape there, you can't read the song titles on it. Since that came out in 82, I'm guessing it must have been mid-80s that U.S. Capitol started to reissue their albums, because this is a, a reissue of Power Play, and that's just what it looks like. I think I've seen just as many cassettes that look like this. Uh, no, no other credits inside of this, and that tape's in pretty good shape. At a certain point, U.S. and Canadian cassettes started to look more the same. Uh, case in point, what I'm about to show you here, 1984, April Wine, Animal Grace. That's the U.S. Capitol version, which looks very much like the same version that Aquarius released, except for the logos. And this is the same, and these credits are the same. And this is what the cassette of Animal Grace looked like in the States. One that I just recently picked up, as you've seen if you've watched our road trip video, One for the Road. This is the infamous One for the Road, and I say infamous, it's the only vinyl I have been unable to track down by April Wine, and this is the original version that came out in early 85. It couldn't have been too much longer that uh, they put out the, the blue and gold issues, because, uh, no, blue and uh, gray, sorry, uh, just for quick reference the ones that looked like this. 
because I've also seen one for the road that looked like that, that had the blue and gray. Uh, next up is Walking Through Fire. This is the US version of Walking Through Fire, or at least one, one version of it. Nothing inside it except the XDR, and this is what the tape looked like. I only have one other April Wine cassette to show you. I made a comeback in Canada in 93 with a great album, great uh, rocking album called Attitude. And this is what the cassette looks like. Of course, it folds out. This is around the time I got into April Wine. This is a, this is a great album to listen to. Really heavy for them. Heavy and catchy. And that's what the cassette looks like. It was on FRE, which was distributed by Capitol Records in Canada. So like I said, I don't have them all, but it just kind of illustrates that um, there are other versions of these albums out there that, that look different still. And if I see them, chances are I'll pick them up. Thanks for watching this edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. AprilWine.ca is their official website. You can also find them on Facebook.